Hi, Peter Lunderby at SUSE here. Today I'm going to talk about Cloud Application Platform and Azure DevOps Pipelines. I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, the history of uh, DevOps. We're also going to focus on uh, CICD uh, or continuous integration and continuous deployment and why this is important not only for speeding software delivery uh, but also what this can mean for uh, today's digital organizations delivering quality code and high levels of automation. So my goal for today's session and uh, I hope that you will take away from this session is why cloud application platform can make a vital component and a central part of your release pipeline. I will also end with showing, showing a demo of this in action. But first, uh, let's start with a short introduction to the or origins and concepts with the evolution of the DevOps culture. We end up at looking at coupling this with the tool developers use every day, Git. I also show a couple of scenarios using GitOps, the GitOps concept. So, let me start with a quick recap of what led us here and where DevOps uh, originated from. So, unfortunately, the word DevOps means a lot of different things to a lot of people. This can be a challenge when you're trying to understand what DevOps is or when you're trying to define DevOps. But ultimately, DevOps was born from the collaboration of developers and operations, getting together, expressing their ideas and concerns about the industry we're working in and how to best get the work accomplished. So this was not a big bang event. This was an evolution going on for many, many years that then led up to this more uh, DevOps uh, type of, uh, of culture we have today or that many companies are looking at uh, adopting today. So really the power of DevOps is in the culture that supports it, shifting the mentality away from the traditional silos we have. So it's important to, to, uh, to remember that we have to do the cultural changes before we start doing the technology. Many times the technology fails because the organization wasn't ready for it. We tend to like our silos because it tells us what we are, what we are doing and who we are, and it gives comfort and something to control and have a say about. You are in charge. I think to, to, uh, to start break this up a little bit, you need to gently roll out any of these cultural changes in a way that describes the value for each party. In particular, highlighting the value of their current role. So I think in a nutshell, DevOps is a great idea, idea and theory, but it can be really hard in reality. But ultimately, what we are trying to achieve is to get people to work together with, a, with common processes to enable continuous delivery of value that in the end uh, gets out to the market, to our customers. And in doing this, we, we want to be innovative and increase the speed to market. It's also about creating a feedback loop to be able to constantly improve our products and solutions in a loop uh, that is uh, always evolving. Continuous delivery is the ability to get changes of all types, including new features, configuration changes, bug fixes, and new experiments into production or into the hands of users safely, quickly, and in a sustainable way. So each um, stakeholder has different ways of seeing this. 
If I generalize a little bit, I think developers tend to embrace CI, CD and DevOps concepts fairly quickly because they get to move more independently to serve customers faster and to get their code out the door. The art is to balance the tools, the views, the dashboards and the monitoring with the shared resources and the pipelines, giving them access to what's relevant for, for them to do their job. And in doing this, we enable them to innovate without getting stuck in tedious manual tasks. And here, really, automation is your friend. If you think about it, um, really, the objective of software development is to constantly optimizing and learning and exploring. It's not about learning all the bits about infrastructure. Ultimately, the developers want to focus on code and push code <coughs> into the system or factory in place when ready. Cloud Foundry has a good analogy for this that is famous, more or less famous at this time. Here's my code. Run it in the cloud. I don't care how. So, looking at this from the develop, uh, from sorry, from the operations perspective, I think uh, there there is there are other views uh, coming from from this um, group of people, and I also think that if you can tell the operations that having a coordinated having coordinated teams means they can solve problems faster and that they won't be up late at night figuring out what goes wrong, you're more likely to get them on board. In one way, looking at ops, looking at operations, is what they do is sharpen the tools to be used for the development teams. So the developer, developers can create real tangible business value to the products and solutions going to the market. It's really a lot about enabling the developers to be more experimental and effective. So how do we do this? I think an approach can be to take more control of the variables we, we can control here. We, we automate all the configuration <coughs> and deployment of our systems. So we eliminate whole classes of failures. And then we optimize to make it as fast and efficient to get very high quality feedback. So when all this comes together, uh, we get this value cycle we call DevOps. And it's about the union of developers and operations coming together, sharing the same goals, sharing the same uh, problems and uh, going towards one uh, and the same target. And really it's not just putting in a CI CD pipeline and say we are doing DevOps. Because actually you're not doing DevOps, you're doing more automation. And when you have no coordination and the team collaboration goes down the drain, it's because you probably didn't didn't have the right DevOps in the first place. You didn't have the culture. You just had automation in place. I think this is uh, important. And also, don't forget, make sure the different cross-functional teams sit together, learn from each other uh, on a regular basis. So, again, DevOps is just a multifunctional team that cuts across the silos, but you first have to disrupt the culture. So what are, what are some of the learnings that uh, I would like to, to uh, bring forward here? I think it's important to understand that it's not the architecture itself or the IT industry driving the culture, cultural changes. 
it's ultimately it's the business demand to meet the market more quickly. We need to, there is a drive to differentiate ourselves as a company on the market. Competition is running faster and faster and getting new features out on the market um, in, at more speed. So to catch up with this, we need to develop this DevOps uh, type of uh, cultures. But I can also say, I, I think also that it's important to involve people early on and describe the value to get them on board uh, on this uh, journey. And again, CI/CD pipelines alone is not equal to DevOps, it's automation. Automation is good, it's something we need, but start with the culture. Also, I think um, it's important to, to uh, at some point in the journey, have a look on um, establishing smaller development teams working very close to the ideas that they are trying to achieve. Giving them a clear holistic understanding of the piece of code they are sharing. Solid visual communication that enables to, to play with this code uh, and then let this code be part of a grander uh, solution, product or whatever you have there. So again, developers want to worry about their app and not necessarily the infrastructure or the Kubernetes space or the technical implementations of the underlying layers. But don't forget, um, what, do, what is important for developers, I think, is to give them the monitoring they need to be able to improve the, the, the code and the applications that they are um, deploying. So monitoring and observability is key, it's crucial here. So how do we then uh, mix this with uh, this concept of Git? I mean, developers use Git in the heart of everything they do today. So how does this fit into the previous concept I just talked about, DevOps? Well, uh, this concept of GitOps has a high emphasis on both automation and infrastructure as code. We have much better separate, I mean, what we get is that we get much better separations of concerns if we use this concept. Also, uh, the build process is separate from your infrastructure. You also operate it on a separate code repository on a se and many times on a separate process. It's a high level of automation and you have a very clear view of what's inside your app. Meaning, uh, from an operations perspective, for example, you can easily see how many replicas we have, which version is running. Um, as a developer, for example, if you want to roll back, you can just revert the commit and push a new change that overrides the one you just committed. We often leverage automation and infrastructure as code to further reduce the need for manual input during this application lifecycle management. Okay, so let's see how some workflows could look like in practice when we talk about GitOps. So here, you are a software developer that wants to deliver a new feature uh, to an application that is running on someone else's computer or aka the cloud. So how would you go about to do that in a more traditional sense? Well, you can implement the feature and commit it. You can build an artifact and copy it over to the server to a correct location, and then you can restart this service. Uh, so what you see here is described and all the things that can potentially cause problems when deploying. So the traditional way of doing, doing this we really want to avoid. We don't want to be doing this. 
it can cause all sorts of problems. Security, versioning, it, it can have impact on automation, and also it's really not scalable as you grow as an organization and, uh, and need to get uh, solutions out the door quickly and uh, all of that. So we could do better. Let's see how we can improve this even further. So again, the developer, once you submit your change, the server will check if there is something new there and it will pick it up. This is accomplished by using some continuous delivery server of your choice. I'm, I will show uh, using uh, Azure DevOps pipelines in my demo, for example. It will then pull the changes and execute any automatic tests you have in place. And it will also execute any quality checks and then build the artifact itself. This pipeline is often the only pipeline the developer comes in contact with. The artifact itself is then published to an artifact repository. And once the artifact is there, it can be the, the, same, the same delivery pipeline, or it can be a separate delivery pipeline that sees that there is a new artifact available, and it will then make a deployment to your infrastructure. But can you see the problem with this? This causes the build pipeline and application deployment to be coupled. You need to give the pipeline access to your infrastructure and you want to have as few people and processes accessing your infrastructure, of course, for security reasons. Also, what happens if you, um, let's say, want to apply some configuration changes? You could log in to the cloud dashboard and do your changes there. And you could use automatic scripting tools to do it for you. But then again, you need to access your infrastructure externally. And this can be a really big security concern. And also, if you make a typo somewhere, it can really have dramatic consequences in when it gets deployed to your infrastructure. So, and also remember, the developer often just comes in contact with the upper pipeline here in this picture. They just basically deploy something and forgets about it. So can we improve this even more? Yeah, we can. Let's, let's look how to do this with a Git approach, with uh, a more GitOps approach and improve it even more. So, uh, with GitOps, we define our infrastructure in code and version it in a code repository. This has several advantages. Other elements we need to have for this to work is a GitOps operator. A GitOps operator is a process that lives inside your infrastructure. And it will pull the artifact repo from, for new versions constantly. Once it sees a new version, it will not do a deployment straight into your app. It will instead update the definition of your infrastructure in your code repository. Then you have a separate polling loop that checks for changes of the infra. And once it sees that there is something new there, Maybe you have a new version available, or you want to schedule an application change. It will make the infrastructure update itself. With Kubernetes, we can use declarative configuration, and Kubernetes cluster will always try to do its best to transit to this desired state you want to be, it to be in. This also has the positive uh, impact that there is no external process accessing your infrastructure. Instead, 
the infrastructure will pull the artifact itself. And since you are more involved into the process of operating your application, making any changes is as easy as submitting a pull request with all the benefits of that. And it's something that the developers are quite used of doing. So basically your colleagues can catch any typos, catch any errors, do the reviews and also the knowledge is shared across the company. And finally, uh, once you merge any changes in the polling job, the polling job will kick in again and update your infrastructure to the desired state. So uh, this is how we, one example workflow, how we can use GitOps uh, to accomplish things more effectively. So now I will show this in more in practice. Uh, I will show a GitOps process using Azure DevOps pipelines as uh, a cloud application platform. Uh, first, uh, I what I have done is I have uh, <coughs> cloned the repo uh, from my GitHub account to my local machine here. Uh, and it's basically a Ruby script uh, using Sinatra to to show some text on the on the web page. So, but it, it's just to to demonstrate the purpose of uh, of the integration with the Azure DevOps pipelines and cloud application platform. Uh, so, what I do is I can show you here. Uh, I have a configuration file here uh, you can have a look in and you can see here it's just typing out uh, hi I'm your cap web app so let's just do a bit change this to second remove the smiley and save that and then I will add my my file uh, and then I will have a commit message for this uh, change and then we deploy this Okay, now it's deployed, and if we have a look now in in my uh, DevOps dashboard here, we can have a look on my pipeline. I've set up a pipeline here, and as you can see, it's now triggered because it saw there was a change on my GitHub repo. So it's triggering a build process here. And we can actually have a look on, uh, on the CLI. And we can see this is the, the change it triggered on. So let's go back again. And uh, yeah, a little bit about um, Azure DevOps here. So, you know, it's a very quite powerful uh, CI CD tool. Um, and yeah, there, there's different parts here. So a little bit about uh, there's something called boards here. And what the boards allows you to do is to do your agile planning, uh, to do some, maybe you have some Kanban boards you can use. Uh, you can also track backlogs. You can uh, customize different dashboards. Uh, there is a lot of them coming out of the box, of course. You can have a lot of reporting. 
And uh, yeah, Azure Boards is also integrate with GitHub and, and others like GitLab, etc., etc. So basically, it's it's uh, everything you need for a development team. Um, and the pipelines section here. This is where you're going to do all your CI/CD. Uh, you can also do quite advanced infrastructure as code type of implementations. You can, as part of your pipeline, you can stand up Kubernetes clusters and other infrastructure uh, tasks. So basically, anything you can do from a command line and from a REST API, you can do it in the pipeline. Uh, so yeah, it's quite powerful. And it also has a CD part uh, beyond the CI. Uh, so basically everything I just said about CI uh, is also true about the CD system. So what the CD system does for you, you it adds different concepts, like concepts as environments, uh, concepts as approvers, release gates, etc. And uh, it also adds integrations to Terraform, Chef, etc., etc. So, again, you can do very powerful uh, pipelines. But coming back to our demo here, uh, so what it has done now, it has built our project for us. <coughs> so, you can see here four minutes ago. Uh, and what I can do is I can then create a release of this. Uh, we can have a look on how this particular release pipeline looks like. So you can see here it's actually triggering on uh, changes on my GitHub. And it will then do... So it will use this artifact and then it will do two tasks after this. It will set up a Linux machine and it will with Cloud Foundry CLI on it. And then it will push my code to Cloud Foundry that I have running on a, another a SUSE test uh, a developer cloud application platform instance that you can use for free basically. So let's try this then. So right now I'm doing this manually just to show you. So create release. And I name it something here, SUSECON 2020. Create. And we can actually see what's going on here. You can see it's waiting for a for an agent to be free to deploy this. Let's have a look on the log. <coughs> so it's downloading the artifacts and before that it was in initializing the job now it's installing the Cloud Foundry CLI it's deploying to my uh, cloud application platform uh, it's pushing <coughs> using Ruby build packs finalizing Ruby uploading to droplets now waiting for the app to start. So pushing to Cloud Foundry succeeded, finalizing job succeeded. Great, so we should have our new updated app running in Cloud Application Platform. Let's have a look. So I'm logging in here. This graphical user interface is called Stratos, and it's our front-end to Cloud Application Platform. 
And we can see here, I have a couple of applications already installed here, but the one we just installed now is, is this one, the web app here. So if we have a look on that one, uh, now if I everything seems okay, there's one instance running one on one, I can easily scale this up and down, and I, I can also set in auto scaling so we can take care of uh, increasing traffic and so on. And this app is accessible via a route, and the route that is generated for me. So this is a, a, a random route. I can also set the fixed route, of course, but this is just because I'm deploying uh, in this demo. So clicking on this one will take us to our app. Yeah, now we can see this actually running here. I'm your second cop web app. So yeah, you can imagine uh, using this in a in a in a small or, or very large uh, development team to deploy your code and also get a nice integration with uh, all the capabilities of Microsoft Azure DevOps pipelines. Thanks a lot and see you next time.